Okay, we'll have a moment of silent meditation and pledge to the flag. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning. Good morning. Woo. Good morning. It is March 23rd. It is 10 o'clock. All three county commissioners here. And for the first time in two years, none of us are wearing masks. That is a commissioners. And it's optional. So I just want to make sure. So I'm real pleased that we have the option. We now have consents and approval. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I've we been have up most of the night. four exonerations for $638.39. Minutes for March 16th, 2022. Vouchers General County Fund 109,315.40. 911, 3,203.43. Chestnut Ridge Park 838.45. Camp Muffley 13,847.45. Mason Dixon Park 162.47. Assessor's Valuation 1,584.50. Purchasing Card Vouchers General County Fund 18,202.86. 911-214-92, Camp Muffley, 1056.03. Assessor valuation, 95.45 for a voucher total of 148,718.96. The position vacancies for boards and authorities are listed on our website, and we have fiduciary orders for March 23rd, 2022. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. Papa moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Do we have any fiduciary orders? You, you just approved the orders. Well, I mean, any fiduciary. Any um, additional. additional. No. Okay, uh -uh. yeah. I always ask that. Okay. Introduction of new employees, prosecuting attorney. We have. Uh, yes. Yeah. It's not really new. No. Um, it's re rehiring. She is uh, bringing back uh, Ponch Reyes for a part time temporary position as an assistant prosecuting attorney. With a weekly salary of eleven hundred dollars, no fringe benefits will be required, and this is again just a temporary position. Right. Move to approve the position as presented. Second. Pop moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Are there any other positions? Okay. We now will have comments from the public. You have four to five minutes to come before us. Please state your name, your address, and how we can help you. Is there anyone who would like to speak? Okay, feel free. Welcome. Want me to stand here? Uh, oh, if you go to the podium, I'm sorry, the camera can see it so everyone can know who's talking. Okay. All righty. Uh, well, my name's Kevin Daly. Um, I live at 3401 Earl L. Core Road. Um, that's in the Richard area, um, a little past Rock Forge, about a mile off of the interstate uh, on Route 7 East. Um, We've lived out there since 1996. Uh, since that time, uh, we have acquired nine properties. We have put considerable amount of money into them. Um, we're, um, we have seven at this point. We sold two last year. Uh, we sold one for uh, 77.5 and one for 105,000. Now, if you know that coal mining community, you know that's pretty good money for that. Now, if you know Morgantown, you know that's not, you don't get much for $100,000 in Morgantown. So we've put a considerable amount of money in these properties and we've, uh, we rent those out. Uh, rents in the $800 to $1,000 a month range. So the problem is, is that there is a mine, which is not the mine that Decker's, uh, uh, friends of Decker's Creek are, are, are uh, paying attention to. Uh, this is the mine across the, the street, not the Richard mine, but the Fairmont Coal Seam mine. And it is leaking red water, um, which, you know, is because I was told from the DEP is because it's getting a considerable amount of, of influx of water and it's uh, hydrostatic pressure is pushing it out. So and about 2000, we start noticing red water in our basements. So we've been dealing with that for quite a long time. Um, then it starts coming up through the middle of the road. 
So that's when people start paying attention. And they, um, the, the state road came out and they um, put in a, a pipe. Now there had been an existing pipe under there and an existing uh, leach bed in front of our home, but it got considerably worse and um, I've got pictures of it. I've got pictures of, of, of semi-trailers traveling on the wrong side of the road to avoid the, the dip in the, and the bad road in front of our home. And to this point, now it's coming back in that same, uh, in that, in that same fashion. So what's, what is going on here is that they put a new leach bed in and they ran um, an engine, they come out and they engineered it um, improperly. Uh, it, it clogs up and that forces the water up through the road again. And it's coming onto my property. 2017, uh, there was an article in the newspaper, which I have a copy of it here, where they interviewed the DEP and they interviewed the, the, the state road. Uh, state road took, uh, took um, um, uh, responsibility because this, they're the ones that created this leach bed. They're the ones that, that funneled the water off of their road into, into a closed drainage ditch, uh, a pipe. It clogs up. They won't come out and fix it. In 2017, I've got pictures here, I spent thousands of dollars putting in a, my own drainage system, which clogs, of course, uh, because of the way the sediment operates, and, and, and I had to put all brand new gravel in my driveways. Um, it's, it's hard for me to, to rent a property when people drive through this and see what's going on. It's, it's even harder for me to sell a property. Um, so it's, it's deteriorating our, our property values as well. So I've been on, in contact with a woman um, from the State Road. May I say her name? Sure. Yeah. Um, her name is uh, Tanya Clemente, and yes. she's in Bridgeport. Mm -hmm. And she's, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised they even have that position, honestly, uh, because, but she's there trying to do the best she can. And, um, you know, I can't get anywhere with David McCormick locally. Um, you know, he, let's just, we'll ignore that, that, that position. Um, so it, since 2017, they've cleaned this pipe twice. It really needs to be cleaned out every six months to once a year. Um, right now it's beyond anything it's ever been. The actual uh, um, square cement box with the grate on it is not even visible. It's, it's totally total mud. It's going down both sides of the street. Um, I mean, I can show you pictures. It's, it's pretty horrible. So what I'm here today to, to do is um, to ask the commission if they could reach out to the state to the state road, okay? And I know that that the engineering issues are, are something that you know is is not. But at some point, the DEP and the state road are going to have to come to some kind of um, uh, consensus that something seriously needs to be done out here because it is going both directions and. And so it's just not affecting six homes right now. Uh, the, uh, the Phillips properties, um, Ralph Phillips property across the street, uh, th what happens is it's breaking up the road. Uh, it, this red ooze is coming up. There's also a silver oxide coming up. Um, it's, it's not a good situation. We, we replace sump pumps at least once a year in these basements. We'll deal with that. That's, we, can, we can have that. But I can't have this stuff coming into my driveway. I can't access my property. So, uh, I, if you, uh, that's all I really have to say at this point. If if anybody would like to take a look at the pictures, if that would be of any value, I, I know you're going to work in my favor. I, I appreciate this. So, and that's all I have to say. Would you like to um, share the pictures? Share the pictures, and then we will probably speak to you at, during our presentation. Okay. So. Basically, I want to give you first the article that was in the paper. Now that got it moving a little bit at that point. What I'll do is I'll and, move and Here's the pictures. Yeah, if you give it to him and then we'll pass. Okay. Now, that first picture you're going to look at is dated. That's what it looked like last fall. And when you see the pictures that are, are newer, you'll see how quickly it can, it can create a problem. June 15th, 2017. So, ju just for clarification, 
they have, it is precedent that the DOH has gone out and done something out there. Yes, they created this. That's all I wanted. Yes, that's important to know. Okay. Thank you. We will probably address it at the end. Thank okay. you, sir. Thank you very much for coming. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? Okay. Seeing none, we'll close the comments from the public. Proclamation Fair Housing Month. Is there anybody here? Uh, no, this okay. was requested by Region 6 oh. uh, Planning Development Council. It's oh. something you've done at least oh. once before. Um, I think it's part of the, in order to be eligible for um, community development block grants, you have to pass a fair housing okay. resolution. Um, would you like me to read it? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay. Whereas the Montague County Commission desires to give meaning to the guarantees of equal rights contained in the Constitution and laws of the state, in the United States and to encourage and bring about mutual self-respect and understanding among all citizens and groups in Montague County. And whereas under the Federal Fair Housing Law, Title VIII of the Civil Rights Act of 1968, it is illegal to deny housing to any person because of race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. And wherever, whereas, sorry, <clears throat> whereas under the West Virginia State Fair Housing Law, Title 49-2-305, MCA, a it is illegal to deny housing to any person because of race, sex, religion, color, age, physical, or mental handicap, or national origin. Whereas the Montague County Commission makes a firm commitment to do all within its power to eliminate prejudice, intolerance, disorder, and discrimination in housing. And whereas it is uh, that a fair housing law poster, which has the equal housing opportunity logo, will be displayed at the Montague County Courthouse. And whereas the following procedures will be used to accomplish the purpose of the aforementioned resolution. <clears throat> the Montague County Commission shall inform county employees of the county's commitment to fair housing. The Montague County Commission will post this resolution in county buildings and other public places and publicize it. The Montague County Commission shall direct all employees to forward immediately to the Commission President any reports they receive of housing discrimination. The Commission President shall forward such complaints to the West Virginia Human Rights Commission in Charleston within 10 days of receipt of said complaint. Therefore, now therefore, be it resolved that the Montague County Commission does hereby proclaim April 2022 as Fair Housing Month. Move to approve the proclamation as presented. Prop moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, it passes. Okay. Do we have any grants? We have no grants today. Correspondence. We received an administrative order received from Judge Gajot regarding face coverings at the Mon County Justice Center, and it just modeled ours. Okay, so we have that. Any other unfinished business? Correspondence. Oh, correspondence. Sorry. It's okay. No, it's been a bad day. <laughs> no. I'm all flustered. Yeah. Okay, now unfinished business. No. New business. Uh, consideration to approve items submitted by Kerry Blaney, County Clerk, regarding the 2022 primary election, polling locations and rates, poll workers and rates, and early voting. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Kerry. And we have that before us. Uh, yes, it is that time of year again, and it's hard to believe that we're quickly approaching the May 10th primary election. But before you, um, I have the poll workers which have been presented by both the Republican County Executive Committee and the Democratic County Executive Committee. The list represents 156 of the 165 poll workers that we need to be fully operational on Election Day. So um, with your approval today, our office will begin the process of contacting each of those appointees and confirming their um, work for the primary and scheduling them for their training sessions, which will be held in April. Um, I will call your attention that um, the rates of pay uh, represents a $17 increase from what we've paid in the past. Um, poll worker pay is subject to federal taxation, IRS taxation, and so we try to keep our pay um, on the high side but underneath the threshold that requires them to be put on payroll and have uh, payroll taxes withheld and uh, being required to 
obtain a um, W-2 for that. So that's what represents that. Part of it is for attending a training. Part of it is working for election day. And if a person attends a training and subsequently does not work on election day, they do not get paid. So I don't, you know, want you to think that we're paying a bunch of people to train them and then they're not going to work on election day. So there's a relationship there to the training and the work on election day. Our precincts, I've provided you a list of the precincts and these are um, based upon the, um, they're organized by the ballot styles that we're using for this upcoming election. If you'll notice, we do have 22 different ballot styles that we are preparing because the county executive committees are also on the ballot in this primary. And um, uh, that list represents all of the 43 precincts. We did increase two precincts since um, due to redistricting, but we are in 26 locations. So we did reduce our locations some. We pay $100 per day for our precinct rentals, and that's the, the same rate that we have paid um, for the last several years. Um, we're very uh, appreciative. Uh, we do use um, about half of our locations are in schools, and we try to do that because they do provide um, handicap accessibility and plenty of parking, and normally they're the central um, focal point of your community so most of our voters know where their local school is we do not pay a rental to those schools but we do pay the custodians at each of the schools to open the building and provide us tables and, and all those things and those rates are are also listed for you um, in addition we will be having four early voting locations Mountaineer Mall at our election center is our largest uh, election or early voting location we'll continue to have one at mason dixon park we are having one at westover vol uh, vfw post 9916 and our pierpont location this year will be at pierpont um, landing uh, where the earth's dodge used to be okay. and uh, so that'll we try to hit all of the entry points if you will coming in uh, to the city of Morgantown so our voters can access those early voting sites easily on their way to and from work. Um, in addition to those approvals that we're asking for there, I just will bring to your attention that this week starts absentee balloting. So Friday's the first day for us to be sending absentee ballots out. So that's hard to, that sort of puts everything into perspective mm -hmm. <laughs> when I say that. Um, March the 25th so anyone who is interested in uh, or needs to get an absentee ballot for the primary election can apply for one now and those will begin to uh, start to get sent out this Friday um, on our redistricting effort um, I've brought to your attention in the past it's been a a difficult process uh, working through the state system to um, perform our redistricting however our county is uh, trying to perform all of our work manually outside of the redistricting function that the state is using and we are about 46 percent of the way there so we have 60 a uh, little less than 61,000 red um, records that we need to manually modify for our voters and thanks to the efforts of everyone in our office um, working on it as uh, they can in addition to everything else that we're doing um, we're about 46 percent of the way there so we are hopeful that we are going to have our redistricting completed in enough time before early voting starts which will be here on april the 27th so we're quickly <laughs> the the weeks are quickly wow. ticking ticking away but i'll be happy to answer any questions that you have um, certainly the um, when you talked about the absentee ballot balloting is there going to be any difference this year as a pair as in comparison to the last couple of years are we back to normal or is there is there there's there have to be a specific reason for absentee ballots yeah in the state of West Virginia we are an excused reason and so uh, a voter will still need to complete an absentee ballot application and indicate the excused reason why they are wishing to have an absentee ballot 
in prior years they have opened it up and um, concerns about COVID-19 have been a valid reason um, and they have removed the COVID-19 um, language from the application mm -hmm. but anyone who is of advanced age or who ha is immunosuppressed uh, can still use the medical illness reason to request their ballot okay. but they've they have removed the language itself right. of um, fear of COVID-19 mm -hmm. okay. yeah and anyone that has any questions, uh, we certainly have all of those applications online. Uh, anyone who has any questions about uh, their options to vote uh, for the election or any questions about where they're going to be voting or who is going to be on their ballot, um, they can certainly call our office. We have um, a lot of information on our web page already and um, after this week after we finalize our ballots for absentees we'll have all of those sample ballots online so people can actually um, take a look at the ballot and make sure they're well versed in how different their ballot is going to look uh, when they actually go to cast their vote this time great I move to approve the polling locations and rates poll workers and rates and early voting locations as presented. Second. Pop, move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very you. much. Thanks, Gary. Can't believe we start Friday. <laughs> okay. B, to consider the adoption by the County Commission of a resolution and order which would authorize the execution and delivery of a six supplemental indenture of trust, the six supplemental indenture by and between the county commission and west banco the trustee for the purpose of correcting an erroneous date reference in section 4.06 e i i i of the fifth supplemental indenture of trust the fifth supplemental indenture dated june 9 2021 by and between the county commission and the trustee pursuant to which the county commission's junior subordinate special district excise well excise tax revenue refunding and improvement bonds series 2021 c taxable university town center economic opportunity development district were issued move to approve the <laughs> resolution and order as presented second Papa moved in second we have jason you, you want to hear from me yes sure Absolutely. just so we could yeah for the public could you so explain? they can understand in ink well cliff notes version <laughs> you guys just love our uh our items that, that we give <laughs> you, right? This one is actually a, a pretty straightforward one. Okay. As the three of you probably re recall, last spring, uh, it was early June, obviously based on the date here, uh, we issued a, a three series of bonds uh, for the University Town Center Excise Tax District. Um, the, the Series C bonds were junior subordinate bonds issued uh, with, placed with the developer Westridge. Mm -hmm for the purpose of you know, re reimbursing them for some of, of their out-of-pocket expenses. Um, they're junior subordinate. They are last in line for payment of all the bonds that are outstanding in that district. And they're payable only from ex uh, excess revenues that are available after payment of all the other bonds and administrative expenses and whatever else. And um, in the process of drafting the uh, fifth supplemental indenture, which was the uh, document under which those bonds were issued, <clears throat> Uh, there was a uh, erroneous date reference in section 406e which pertains to the date on which those principal payments from excise from excess excise tax revenues begin uh, there was one section where it said june 1st 2022 406e little little three said mm -hmm. june 1st 2024 oh. so uh west banco the trustee and trying to set up how these payments will work brought this discrepancy to our attention we went back, um, looked at uh, all the documents surrounding uh, this issuance to make sure we knew which date was the correct date. We consulted with the uh, council for the, uh, the placement agent of these bonds, Key Bank, and uh, the bondholder, Westridge, to make sure that they were on the same page and that our thinking was correct. And we all kind of got together and determined that the June 1st, 2024 date was the erroneous date. Right. These payments should begin June 1st, 2022. Mm -hmm. And so the way to correct that in the fifth supplemental indenture <laughs> is to have a sixth supplemental indenture, which just kind of restates that one section with the correct date in there. Um, and so this is just an authorizing order, authorizing Making the, the president to sign, the, the clerk to sign and, and attest, and we'll take care of it from there. 
Okay. This has been moved and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you for this. I'll get some signatures from you after the meeting. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Don't be too long. Consideration to approve a letter of support for the historic Morgantown Post Office Building Renovations and Expansion of Programs. Move to approve the letter as presented. Second. Prop moved and second. It's self-explanatory. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Um, is there any other? It's not really new business, but I need to make a correction to something that was approved last week. Okay. Okay. Um, last week, you all approved a requisition for the industrial park. Um, the way that it was listed on the agenda was incorrect. Mr. Adrian had asked me to keep a placeholder for his requisition, but he didn't tell me it was for a different project. Gotcha. It, so the one that was approved wasn't actually Correct. what should have been approved okay. by 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 the wordage of, of, of the agenda. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Okay. So it actually is requisition for payment number one, which is the correct requisition that was mentioned. Yeah. Just the title is wrong. Okay. 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 So in order to make the bank whole, we're just clarifying We're just amending that. the yes. name. So it, w it is for the Series 2021B Harmony Grove Phase 1 Infrastructure Project Project Fund okay. instead of what was on the agenda. Okay. Hey, we, so. we, we knew there was a difference, and we knew we, cr we approved the correct one. It's just a title on the agenda. Was right. Wrong. That's correct. Exactly. So I have a motion to just change the title. So moved. Second. Pop, move and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay. Quite welcome. Any other new business from any of the commissioners? Okay, if not, any reports from elected officials or department supervisors? Seeing none, reports from county commissioners. Sean? Uh, since the last meeting, uh, last week after our Wednesday meeting, I had my uh, MAP board meeting, Morgantown Area Partnership. On Thursday, we had the Milan Park Executive Committee meeting, uh, and then we, had, we started our budget meetings as we had a few budget meetings here commission chambers and in the evening we had the MMPO meeting Friday I had broadband right away and easements discussion with our consultants uh, furthering that 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 process um, we had staff reports and then we also had budget discussions as needed um, Monday we had grant reviews and final budget reviews uh, yesterday we had a uh, monthly bre breakfast with uh, delegate Statler and uh, Ron Lytle from the school board and former superintendent Devano and then I had an evening meeting last night with some constituents that wanted to uh, talk to me, <laughs> get my <laughs> views on things. Uh, today's a regular day. Uh, tomorrow I have a broadband call, and then we have a special MMPO meeting. Uh, Friday we have a special meeting for our budget approval. So I do want to note to the public that we will be approving our budget on in a special meeting on Friday, and that meeting will be publicized at 10 o'clock. And then we have our staff reports. In general, um, we've been really working a lot of hours in the last two weeks on the budget process. And I want to thank all the elected officials for their, their participation in that process. And I especially want to thank um, Renetta, our administrator, for all of her work. Uh, this has been a 16-hour-a-day you know, project for the last couple of weeks, and it will come to an end on Friday. And, uh, you know, again, it's, it's always... Uh, it's always a uh, it's a fun process to go through, and uh, I think it's a rewarding process to for our citizens once they see, you know, how we're administering their tax dollars. So, uh, thanks for all your efforts, Colleen. Thanks for the grant uh, participation, uh, the grant work, and um, hopefully we'll have people tune in on Friday. Want to echo Sean's comments about the uh, budget? We have put in a ton of hours the last couple of weeks, and I mean we'll get emails and text from Renetta late night early morning she's been working tirelessly so we thank you for your efforts it, it's important to note that, that we're, we're kind of lucky in this county to have um, Commissioner Secor's uh, frenetic brain as far as it goes to budgeting and finances and understanding procurement to an extent that far exceeds the at least my knowledge I won't speak to Tom but no, um, Sean really is the leader on these things and uh, we greatly appreciate that uh, as that uh, puts us in a much better position than we otherwise would be. So thank you for your thank efforts you. and the same to Renette. <coughs> is that it? Yes. Okay. Mine's short too. Uh, 
we had a food distribution and also vaccination uh, on Saturday. I want to thank the Board of Education for allowing us to use their parking lot. We had 286 families and 40 families over at Marjorie Gardens, so we continue to get out the food as quickly as we can, and there is still a need. Um, I did have a, a meeting with Susan Riddle, who will be coming back to us from the Mountain, Visit Mountaineer Country CVB, and some amazing news about how successful our tourism grant program is. It, it is when we first were hoping people were going to apply, now we're getting a lot of applications, probably even more than we realized. But it's really become very, very successful. Uh, finally, uh, Mr. Daly correct, uh, yeah, uh, did uh, contact me and asked what was the best way to ask for help. So I asked him to come to this meeting today, and I wanted to make sure that the commissioners realized that since Normally, it's a DOH problem, and there's very little we can do, or the DOH hasn't been involved with it. What I would hope that the three of us could do, and I, and I continue to do, is just write a letter requesting this to be looked at, reviewed, and explain back to us what can be done. But the pictures are horrendous. I mean, I, d I just don't know how you could even be there that long and continually put in an investment there. And since it was in 2017, that's five years, let's see what we can do to help you and again, we will ask for them to give us some information back and also to help you and reach out to you. So I do appreciate your coming and following the procedures, and hopefully we can get this problem resolved for you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Daly, for coming in, and we yes. will uh, we'll do what we can. I mean, we always don't have control over the DOH, but we do have these microphones here and, in which people listen and to. And the data is going to make it a lot easier for us. I, yeah. I put a considerable amount of money in these properties out there. When you come into this community, the first few, it's a little sketchy going in, but when you get up the road, you can tell which properties I own. Right. No. And that's what we would like to continually see. So we want to make sure that we can continually help those people who are helping the community too. Thank you. So thank you very much. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. We'd be gone. Thank you.